run a little bit more. Are you losing weight? I'm not trying to lose weight, but I always do the same fitness routine mm -hmm. after like 30 years, basically uh, lift three days a week, run three days a week. Um, but one of the runs is a long run, one of them is medium, one of them is a sprint type thing. So um, what I've decided to do this year was just extend the duration of the long run. And um, I like being a mobile. I, I never want to be um, so heavy that I can't move. Like I, like I want to be able to go out and run 10 miles if I have to. So sometimes I do. Um, and I want to be able to sprint if I have to. So sometimes I do. And um, lifting in objects is feels good. It feels good to train like a lazy bear and just lift heavy objects. But I've also started training with lighter weights and higher repetitions and um, for three month cycles and it gives your joints a rest. And um, yeah, so I probably, you know, it, I think it also is interesting to see how training differently changes your cognition. That's probably hormone related, you know, da hormones downstream of training heavy versus hormones downstream of training a little bit lighter. Um, I think my cognition is better when I'm doing more cardio and when the repetition ranges are a little bit um, higher. Which is not to say that people who lift heavy are dumb, um, but there is a because there's real value in lifting heavy. There's a lot of angry people listening to this right now. No, no, no. <laughs> but lifting heavy and then taking three to five minutes rest is far and away a different challenge than running hard for ninety minutes. That's a tough thing. Just like getting in an ice bath, people say, "Oh well, how is that any different than working out?" Um, well, there are a lot of differences, but one of them is that it's very acute stress. Within one second, you're stressed. Mm -hmm. So I, I think subjecting the body to a bunch of different types of stressors in space and time is really valuable. So yeah, I've been playing with the variables in a pretty systematic way. Well, I like long and slow for, like you said, the impact it has on my cognition. Yeah, it, it, it uh, the wordlessness of it, um, the way it puts you in, in a, the way it seems to um, clean out the clutter, Yeah, you know, um, it can take away that hyper-focus and put you more in a relaxed focus uh, for sure. Well, for me, it brings the clutter to the surface at first, mm -hmm. like all these thoughts come in there and then they dissipate. You know, I've been, because uh, I got knee barred pretty hard. That's when somebody tries to break your knee. Oh, yeah, so what's a knee bar? They try and break your knee? Oh, yeah. So you tap, so they- Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, hyperextend the knee th that direction. I got knee barred pretty hard. So um, in ways I don't understand, it kind of hurts to run. I don't understand what's happening behind there. I need to yeah. investigate this. It basically, this the hamstring flex, like curling your leg hurts a little bit. Okay. And that results in this weird dull, but sometimes extremely sharp pain in the back of the knee. So I'm I'm work I'm I'm working through this anyway. Know. But walking doesn't hurt. So I've been playing around with walking mm. recently, like for two hours and thinking. Because I, I, I know a lot of like smart people throughout history uh, have walked and thought. Mm -hmm. And you have to like you know play with things that have worked for others, not just to exercise, but to like integrate this very light kind of prolonged ex exercise into a productive life. So they do all their thinking while they walk. It's like a meditative type of walking. And it's, it's really interesting. It's, it really works. Yeah, the um, the practice I've been doing a lot more of lately is I walk while reading a book. In the yard, I'll just pace back and forth or walk in a circle. Audio book or are you talking no, about? No, hard, hard, hard copy. Were you just holding? I'm holding the book and I'm walking and I'm reading. Yeah, and I usually have a pen and I'm underlining. I have this whole system like yeah. underlining stars, exclamation points. It goes back to university of what things I'll go back to, um, which things I export to notes and that kind of thing. Um, but from the beginning, uh, when I opened my lab at that time in San Diego, before I moved back to Stanford, um, I would have meetings with my students or postdocs by just walking in the field yeah. behind the lab, um, it, you know, and I'd bring my bulldog Costello, yeah. bulldog Mastiff at the time, and he's, he was a slow walker. So it, these were slow walks, but I can think much more clearly that way. There's a Nobel Prize winning uh, professor at uh, Columbia University School of Medicine, Richard Axel, who won the Nobel Prize, co-won the Nobel Prize with Linda Buck for the discovery of the molecular basis of olfaction. And um, he walks in voice dictates his papers. Mm -hmm. And now with Rev or these other, maybe there are better ones um, than Rev, where you can convert audio files into text very quickly and then edit from there. So I, I will often voice dictate um, first drafts and things like that. And um, I totally agree on the long runs, the walks, the integrating that with cognitive work, harder to do with sprints. Um, and then the gym, you know, are you, do you weight train? You just yeah. seem naturally strong yeah. and like thicker jointed. <laughs> it's true, yeah. it's true. I, I mean, we did the one very beginner cause I'm a very beginner of jujitsu class together. And um, yeah, as I mentioned then, uh, but if people missed it, uh, Lex is freakishly strong. I think I was born genetically to hug people. Oh, like Costello. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You guys yeah, have Costello. a certain similarity. Yeah, yeah. He had wrists like, you know, yeah. it's like you and Jocko and Costello yeah. have these like wrists and, and elbows that are super thick, you know, and then you know, when you look around, you see tremendous variation. You know, some people have like the the um, wrist uh, width of a, of a whippet or Woody Allen, and then other people like you or Jocko or, you know, yeah. there's this one uh, Jocko video or thing on GQ or something. Have you seen the comments on Jocko? These are the best. No. Um, <laughs> The comments, I love the comments on YouTube because occasionally they're funny. Um, the best is uh, when Jocko was born, the doctor 
looked at his uh, parents and said, it's a man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Chuck Norris type comments. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah those yeah. are great. Um, that's what I miss about Rogan being on YouTube with the full length episodes. Yeah, oh, like, 